Good old Sergeant Slaughter taught us all we need to know about teamwork. We all go home, or nobody goes home. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Episode 7, Together or Not at All. Alright, so last week I was talking about the fact that they just got the team pretty much back together again. And they have. They're split in two groups right now, but not for long. The episode picks up pretty fast. Now, tonight's episode is all about how they're a team, how they're a family, but there's a bunch of things that are still left hanging, plus a bunch of theories running around the internet that I'm not entirely sure where they come from. My guess would be some fanboy speculation mixed with a healthy dose of not understanding how much lead time you need to run a TV show. But either way, we're going to break it all down. But first, some of you don't know, what I do here is I break down stories and review them, come up with concepts of how and why we tell stories. So I review stories as they come up and do Throwback Thursdays every Thursday and theory videos on Sundays about what we've been thinking about. If that sounds interesting, click subscribe. One of my favorite things to review, though, is time travel stories. My other is comic book stories. This is a comic book time travel story. So everything's coming up bases as far as I'm concerned. We have the slow path. We have the fact that Fitz has come to rescue them. And we have a prophecy that barely makes any sense. But let's get started. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. And this episode picks up with a bang right where the last one left off. I will say, I thought that some of the characters were dead, but they appear to only be scarred and injured. Either way, we've got a running battle and a running fireflight with Daisy's powers turned off and Gemma's implant making her all but useless. Meanwhile, Melinda May is stuck on Earth, which normally is the good thing, but here it's a cockroach-infested hell land that's ravaged by gravity storms. Luckily, Enoch comes along, and he's able to do something about that. It is interesting that he says he doesn't have the tasty insides. I mean, he's still a living creature, right? So there's something in there. I do wonder in the back half of the season how much he's going to play a part in this, if at all. But okay, then we have the other three, Yo-Yo, Mac, and Coulson, dealing with the new Inhuman. Now, they've got to stay hidden because they're being hunted. But realistically, they also need to do something because innocent people are being killed because of the Inhuman they're protecting and themselves. All in all, each of the little groups are already up to their neck in trouble within the first ten minutes of the episode. But that's okay, because that's how most of these episodes start. But for a minute, I want to step away from the protagonists and talk about the antagonists for a minute. Specifically, the way the story is shaped up with Caius and his brother. And the whole idea of whether or not you were built to be a warrior. I mean, realistically, everyone has their own talents. Everyone has their own abilities. And in a warrior culture, if you're an intellectual, you're seen as inferior. But the opposite is also true. If you're a warrior in an intellectual society, you're seen as less than worth anything. Because you can't think or you can't fight or whatever. But the way things work best is when you pair them up. A true master blaster. And in this case, Caius is the brains. He knows how to rule. He has concepts. He can do things. But he can't fight. So he has a girlfriend that knows how to fight. And can I just say on a personal level, I have no problem if my girlfriend wants to fight my battles for me because I am a lover, not a fighter. Totally. But at the same time, it's a kind of interesting moment when you realize that the biggest of the villains have been killed by other villains who are just fighting to get their own place in the world because of the fact that they themselves have been screwed over by their own societies, and that the darkness is kind of variable, depending on a point of view. Now back to our protagonists. As much as I'm enjoying the little bit of a laugh between whether or not Gemma proposed to Fitz or Fitz proposed to Gemma, I do hope that it isn't becoming a reoccurring joke much longer. We get the team more or less back together just in time for them to split up again. And I have to say, I didn't see that coming. I guess I should have seen that 
Yo-Yo and Mac were going to stay on the station to help the kid. But part of me also says, I have to agree with Fitz. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had no way of knowing level 3 was going to be non uh, cap non-capable of supporting life. My plan would have worked. My plan's a good plan. I need a little bit of credit here. I took the long road, remember? I will also say that the joke's about, hey, we don't have a pilot. Hey, Coulson isn't really sure how to land this thing. Could have been done a lot better, but they could have been done a lot worse, too. In all honesty, I swear that the actor that plays Coulson really pulls through in moments like that. Meanwhile, Melinda May and Enoch have found themselves to be in the Zephyr. They're on a shield facility for all intents and purposes. One where they can get some healing and the place that they've been hearing those radio calls from all along. And of course the question is, who has been living on Earth? Who is it that's been coordinating this? And even Enoch doesn't really know that answer, which I would like to point out he could have. I mean, realistically, when we find out how the answer plays out, I sit there and I go, hey, wait a minute. How much of this should he have not only known, but been able to inform Fitz ahead of time? And, yeah, okay, anyway, so the big shock surprise is when the woman in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. comes out and says, Melinda May, it's been so long since I've seen you, I've been waiting to see you again, and she's holding the wooden raven. Okay, so the little girl is a fixed point in time between, or the fixing between the two points in time, and hopefully next week we're going to get some answers. I'm not holding out much hope. Now, I will say that the phrasing she uses in the coming attractions this is the day this ends, does kind of lead towards one of the rumors I've heard, but it's so unbelievable I'm not willing to give it any credence. But for an episode entitled Together or Not at All, I was a little surprised that it ended the way it did with everyone broken up. What about you? What did you think of the episode? I thought it was pretty good, and I could hardly wait till next Friday's episode. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you've been thinking overall about the season, and do you like the idea of Enoch and all of those. Meanwhile, if you liked what you just heard, click the thumbs up. I think that we could all get together and talk about these things. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Right now, I've got almost 90 subscribers. And when I hit 100, I'm going to give away a free Amazon gift card to someone on a special video. But for now, I just want to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a little while. So maybe next week I can reference some comments that you guys have and see what everyone's thinking. But for now, I hope you have a good night, enjoy this, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of the stories we tell.